Imagine a helicopter in flight. Its whirling rotor blades are the engines of its lift, defying gravity with each rotation. Now picture one side of this rotor disc, the retreating side, where blades sweep away from the direction of flight. This side holds a hidden danger retreating blade stall. Retreating blade stall is an aerodynamic phenomenon that can occur when a helicopter flies at high speeds. It's a situation where the retreating blades, those on the side moving in the opposite direction of the helicopter's motion, don't get enough airflow to generate sufficient lift. This imbalance can lead to a loss of control, making it a serious concern for pilots. Think of a bird's wing. It needs a steady flow of air over its surface to create lift. Similarly, helicopter blades rely on the same principle. When the airflow over a blade is disrupted or insufficient, it can stall, losing its ability to generate lift effectively. Understanding retreating blade stall is crucial for anyone involved in helicopter operations, from pilots to engineers. By grasping the science behind this phenomenon, we can enhance safety and prevent potential accidents. Picture a helicopter picking up speed. As it surges forward, the blades on one side of the rotor disc, the advancing side experience increased airflow. This happens because their speed is added to the helicopter's airspeed. However, on the opposite side, the retreating blades face a different reality. The retreating blades moving against the direction of flight experience reduced airflow. Their speed is effectively subtracted from the helicopter's airspeed. At high speeds, this difference in airflow between the advancing and retreating sides becomes significant. Imagine a swimmer racing against a strong current. The side of the body facing the current encounters resistance, while the opposite side experiences less. Similarly, the retreating blades face a relative headwind that diminishes the airflow over their surface. This reduced airflow can lead to a dangerous situation. As the helicopter's speed increases, the airflow over the retreating blades can become so low that it no longer provides enough lift to support the weight of the helicopter. This is the crux of retreating blade stall. We've established that retreating blades face reduced airflow, especially at high speeds. But why is this low relative airflow so detrimental to their performance? The answer lies in the fundamental principles of lift generation. Lift is the aerodynamic force that allows aircraft, including helicopters, to stay airborne. It's generated by the shape and angle of an airfoil, like a wing or a helicopter blade, as it moves through the air. The key is the difference in air pressure between the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil. When air flows over an airfoil, it's forced to travel a longer distance over the curved upper surface compared to the relatively flat lower surface. This difference in distance creates a difference in air pressure, lower pressure on top, and higher pressure below. This pressure difference generates lift, pushing the airfoil upwards. Now imagine starving the retreating blades of air. With reduced airflow, the pressure difference between the upper and lower surfaces diminishes. As a result, the lift generated by these blades decreases significantly. Retreating blade stall doesn't happen out of the blue. There are usually telltale signs that warn pilots of this impending aerodynamic danger. Recognizing these symptoms early on is crucial for taking timely corrective actions. One of the most noticeable symptoms is increased vibrations felt throughout the helicopter. These vibrations stem from the erratic airflow and fluctuating lift forces on the retreating blades. As the stall condition worsens, the vibrations intensify, shaking the entire aircraft. Another warning sign is a change in the helicopter's handling characteristics. Pilots might experience a nose-up pitch moment, as if the helicopter wants to climb despite no input from the controls. This happens because the diminished lift on the retreating side shifts the center of lift rearward, causing the nose to pitch up. Imagine driving a car with a flat tire. The car pulls to one side, requiring constant steering correction. Similarly, retreating blade stall creates an imbalance of forces, making the helicopter feel unstable and difficult to control. Section 5. Pushing the limits. Factors. Leading to stall. While high airspeed is a primary trigger for retreating blade stall, several other factors can contribute to this phenomenon, pushing the delicate balance of forces towards a stall. High altitude plays a significant role. 
As altitude increases, the air density decreases. This thinner air offers less resistance to the blades, reducing their ability to generate lift. Consequently, helicopters operating at high altitudes are more susceptible to retreating blade stall at lower air speeds compared to those flying at sea level. Heavy loads also increase the risk. A heavily loaded helicopter requires more lift to stay airborne. This puts additional strain on the retreating blades, making them more prone to stalling, especially at high speeds or in turbulent conditions. Turbulence adds another layer of complexity. Gusty winds can disrupt the smooth airflow over the blades, further reducing lift and potentially triggering a stall. Abrupt maneuvers, such as sharp turns or rapid climbs, can also create similar airflow disturbances, increasing the likelihood of retreating blade stall. Section 6. Unraveling the spin deeper into the symptoms. We've touched upon some symptoms of retreating blade stall but let's delve deeper into the unsettling sensations and control difficulties pilots experience as this aerodynamic gremlin takes hold. Rotor vibrations, often the earliest and most persistent symptom, are more than just a nuisance. They are the tangible manifestation of the chaotic air dance happening above. As the retreating blades struggle for lift, they shudder and shake, transmitting these vibrations throughout the airframe. The nose-up pitch tendency can be particularly disconcerting. It feels counterintuitive. You're trying to fly forward, yet the helicopter seems determined to climb. This is the result of the shifting center of lift, a consequence of the uneven lift distribution between the advancing and retreating blades. Adding to the disorientation, a rolling tendency might also manifest. This happens because the decreased lift on the retreating side can cause that side of the helicopter to dip, initiating a roll. The helicopter, once a symbol of stability, starts to feel like a bucking bronco. Imagine trying to balance a spinning top that's wobbling uncontrollably. That's the kind of instability and unpredictability that retreating blade stall injects into helicopter flight. Section 7. Regaining Control – A Pilot's Guide to Recovery Facing the onset of retreating blade stall can be a harrowing experience but understanding how to recover from this situation is paramount for pilots. The key lies in restoring balanced airflow over the rotor blades. Reducing airspeed is often the most effective immediate action. By slowing down, the pilot reduces the difference in airflow between the advancing and retreating blades, allowing the retreating blades to regain lift. Think of easing off the gas pedal when a car starts to skid. It's about regaining control by reducing the forces at play. Lowering the collective, which controls the angle of the rotor blades, can also help. By reducing the angle of attack, the pilot reduces the lift demand on the blades, easing the strain on the retreating side. However, this must be done judiciously to avoid altitude loss. Smooth and controlled movements are crucial throughout the recovery process. Abrupt maneuvers can exacerbate the stall, so pilots must exercise finesse and precision. It's akin to gently coaxing a tightrope walker back to balance. Every input counts. Section 8. Knowledge is Power. The Importance of Understanding Retreating Blade Stall. Retreating blade stall is a stark reminder that even the most sophisticated flying machines are bound by the laws of physics. For helicopter pilots, understanding this phenomenon isn't just about acing exams, it's about safeguarding lives. Knowledge empowers pilots to recognize the warning signs, anticipate potential hazards, and take appropriate actions to prevent a dangerous situation from escalating. It's about respecting the delicate balance of forces that keep a helicopter aloft and operating within safe limits. Training plays a vital role in equipping pilots with the skills and instincts needed to handle retreating blade stall. Flight simulators in particular offer a safe and controlled environment to practice recovery techniques and build muscle memory for those critical moments. Ultimately, awareness, education, and rigorous training are the cornerstones of mitigating the risks associated with retreating blade stall. By fostering a culture of safety and continuous learning within the helicopter community, we can strive to make this aerodynamic gremlin a phantom of the past.